I'm uh, Baruch Blumberg. I was the uh, first uh, director of the NASA Astrobiology Institute. Uh, prior to doing that, I had some experience at San Francisco where I came back and taught in the human biology program. While I was there, uh, I was um, uh, invited uh, to visit uh, uh, NASA Ames Research Center uh, and uh, take part in the astrobiology roadmap workshop. And I attended, and that was pretty exciting because that was the sort of founding charter uh, established the, well, the roadmap. Uh, and that roadmap existed for, I don't know, eight or, eight or nine years afterward, and then it was, and it was, uh, old, it was changed somewhat. Uh, but in any case, that proved really interesting. And then the, uh, uh, the uh, director of NASA Ames Research Center and his colleagues asked me to organize another seminar after that, which I did. Uh, and uh, so I became familiar with uh, you know some of the staff and people at uh, Ames, and I enjoyed their work very much, and it seemed so open, you know. So, and uh, well, one day Harry McDonald, who was the director then, uh, asked, said he'd like to talk to me, and um, he came down to my uh, office at uh, the Quadrangle at Stanford, and he said they were looking for a director of the NASA Astrobiology Institute. And uh, I said, well, if you give me a week or two, I can come up with some names. And he said, no, we had you in mind. <laughs> so I said, yes. <laughs> and the, the, wonder, the great thing about this field, first of all, is it uh, integrates many disciplines. In order to have any understanding, the, the, the kind of best arrangement is to be you know, a sort of specialist in, in some area which you have particularly uh, intense training. Uh, but to be open to understand other disciplines. Uh, and we incorporated 10, 12 different disciplines in our program. In fact, you couldn't apply for a grant unless the grant came from more than one department. And very often our insistence on that led to departments at the universities to really talk to each other for the first time. Hello, I'm Jim Casting. I work at Penn State University and I'm a professor of geosciences. We've been funded three times by the Astrobiology Institute and we have people from geosciences and biology and astronomy who are all members of the group. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of graduate students. I think we've graduated more graduate students with astrobiology dual degrees than any other institution. And so it's, it's really a great place to come and get involved in the whole field. The great news is one of our students last year who had been a French major went to your summer program with Blair and has now been accepted in the PhD program at uh, Penn State. Oh, so that, you, got, you, you turned, you know, that was a sequence. This that's course, what we like to see. Yeah, my colleague Blair Hedges in biology has been running these NSF summer REU programs, research uh, experiences for undergraduates. So I think it's a great way to recruit people into the field. Sure I'm Malcolm Moulter. I'm director of the Australian Centre for Astrobiology at the University of New South Wales in Sydney. I set up the Australian Centre for Astrobiology in, in 2001 and in 2002 we became affiliated with the, the NASA Astrobiology Institute uh, and we continue to this day. We're now based at the University of New South Wales in, in Sydney. We have 10 academics there, ranging from theoretical physicists, and, uh, planetary scientists, environmental microbiologists, molecular biologists, geologists, uh, and others who I might have forgotten. And at the moment we have uh, 10 PhD students and, and one master's student studying a, a wide range of, of things particularly uh, focused on the search for extrasolar planets uh, and on the, um, the study of the modern stromatolites, so the environmental microbiology and molecular biology, and on the Archean rock record and the early record of life on Earth. We take students from all over the world. We've had students from the US, um, from China, from Spain, from Britain. So we, we've got a very vibrant, uh, relatively small group and we are very um, interested in having more students. When you were in space science altogether, including in astrobiology, you're, you're, you're walking on the edge of the unknown because nobody has been able to 
use the high platforms that are available now. So not only didn't anybody else make these kinds of observations, they weren't able to do it. There was no way they could have prior to the development of, of the space age, essentially, and access to, uh, to high observation places. The, the, there's a field trip to the moon, several of them. You know, and right. I mean, having all these observations on Mars from which new geological theories are made, uh, looking for extrasolar planets in which you get configuration of planets that were never predicted by theory. Well, you see connections of phenomena that uh, you, you couldn't possibly see without going into the field. But you wouldn't know what to look for, in a sense. You have to go and, and learn from what you, what you saw. Most of what goes on in astrobiology is, is based on this kind of inductive method. My name is Kevin Hand. I'm a uh, scientist down at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Uh, I like to think of JPL as sort of the, uh, the Manhattan of uh, robotic exploration of space. If you're in, uh, you know, Manhattan is the epicenter for so many exciting things that go around uh, on the globe, whether it's, I don't know, fashion or food or this thing or that thing, uh, people always feel like they have to go to, go to Manhattan. Um, if you're into the exploration of the solar system and beyond, you got to go to JPL. I mean, that is where things get done. That's, on any given day, I can walk into any given lab and see components for the next Mars rover, the components for the next flagship mission. Very exciting place to be. And it's a great melting pot of scientists and engineers. When we talk about going to a world like Mars or Europa or any of these places, you can't just go to your little catalog and pick out a, an instrument. Uh, these instruments need to be you know, built, developed, tested uh, to an incredible degree because when we do robotic exploration, we're bringing the lab to the field. We're bringing the lab to the sample. Uh, and that's part of also what's exciting uh, in the astrobiology community through the A-STEP and A-STID and NAI uh, programs. Uh, you've got astrobiologists working uh, many times with, with engineers to bring and develop instruments uh, to explore uh, field sites here on Earth that can help refine the technology, refine the instrumentation, and help move it along the sort of technology evolutionary chain that's called the technology readiness level, uh, such that someday we can bolt it onto a spacecraft and send it off to a different world, uh, a distant world. And so that's part of what I really enjoy about JPL is that bridging of the scientists and engineers to address some of these really uh, amazing questions. Uh, there are many opportunities. The best place to go to look uh, straight away is jpl.nasa.gov and there's an EPO link uh, there. But um, there are opportunities through NASA's Graduate Student Research uh, Fellowship where you can work with someone at a given center and in my case when I was in grad school I wrote one of those proposals, it got funded, and I started working with, uh, with a colleague down at JPL, and that has now led to my being hired by JPL. Uh, so I highly encourage you to look to see what kind of funds your university provides, then contact somebody uh, at JPL that you're interested in working with, let them know you've got funding, and uh, they'll most likely say, yeah, come work with us. If you don't have funding, then there are formal pathways within JPL that you can go through to, uh, to get access to funding either through NASA headquarters or internal money at JPL. And that information is, in, is at uh, jpl.nasa.gov. You know, the, the, in research, you're not trying to find out what you know. You're trying to find out what you don't know.